Bible Stories for Grown-Ups, Part 4. Oh, so last time, it was quite dramatic. Self-centeredness threw a fit and killed his brother over some silly offering. So here is one of the first examples in the Bible of mental illness. Uh, yes, then this is what was happening. This obviously what was happening is that um, uh, Cain, whose name actually, as, as we saw last week, whose name actually means, uh, in, in essence, means self-centeredness, uh, self-importance, self, uh, you know, that, that whole uh, kind of idea, uh, was not happy when uh, it seemed to him as if God was slighting his offering. His brother Abel gives the, uh, some nice uh, piece of livestock. And by the way, what kind of a weird deal is this in the first place? That when did we start thinking that God wanted the sacrifice of livestock, uh, this, this, uh, this uh, blood offering? This is very interesting because I think that, that um, I think it's important to talk about this, that um, the idea of sacrificing the best of the best. Now, in a symbolic way, in a symbolic way, this really makes a lot of sense. That a sacrifice, not being a sacrifice where now we're going to miss something, but rather a, a gift. If we think about that we want to give gifts, uh, just in general, but as part of worship that we're going to give gifts to God, uh, then it would seem like the, the most appropriate gift would be the best of the best. And so this was where, and this, of course, the Hebrews had this, the idea correct in that what they said was, if you're going to give a gift to God, don't go, you know, if it's livestock, don't go giving the weak of the herd. You give the best example of your livestock, right? And uh, then, uh, so this is what happens is, Abel, of course, gives the best of his livestock. And then, Cain gives, uh, we assume, the best of his produce, right? But he looks at it as differently. And how it's written here is it, look, it seems as if God is saying he really wasn't that impressed with them. Um, and then when, when Cain gets upset, the answer that comes back to him, and by the way, these are, this is a direct conversation, the way it's laid out in here. There's a direct conversation going on. God says to Cain, what are you upset about? If you did a good job, it would be good. So just do a good job, right? So now I like, I like that idea that, so the, who is, now I'm thinking that Cain is saying uh, himself, he is going, man, my stuff just <laughs> isn't up to par, right? But then, but then he's taking offense over it and becoming jealous of what his brother did rather than him concerning if he really thought that his produce wasn't the best then his proper concern would have been to produce better produce right rather than getting upset at his brother in any event this whole idea of sacrifice i think this would be a good time to discuss that that um okay so things keep going wrong in the world now we're talking about people primitive people who can't really explain why things are happening around them. There's all sorts of, uh, all, all sorts of weather-related issues. There's, I mean, there's all kinds of stuff happening, and uh, they're going, why is this happening? And they begin to give personalities to these various events. And they, they end up like... Um, trying to appease them. They're like, they're like these, there's, there's, uh, there's animal gods. There's, there's, uh, you know, they, all these different gods. There's, and, uh, and so they think if we do something good for them, then they'll do something good for us. So they try to appease these different elemental type of gods. This is a very primitive kind of practice. And they're thinking that actually what they want what these gods want is some kind of blood sacrifice because they saw loss of life in these 
natural disasters that occurred. And so they're thinking, well, obviously they're bloodthirsty. They're, you know, they're, they're killing people. And then the other thing that they see is the lack of being able to be sustained. So they would give to fertility was important. Fertility of the land, fertility of the people. And so they see that when there is a lack of those, that life can't thrive either. So we got to give, we want to do these sacrifice things to appease these gods who are obviously bloodthirsty. So we're going to give them some. And then this transfers to this new monotheistic religion where these attributes, whereas previously they thought there were all kinds of different elements, elemental gods at work, now we attribute all this to one God. And so when things go wrong, it must be God. Or at least it must be God's will. And when things go right, it must be God. And it must be God's will. So our job then in a world that is governed by an obviously capricious God who is arbitrarily, it seems, deciding to bless some and not bless others you can't you, it's it's you don't want to think about it that way it's difficult for a person to think well you don't you don't know what god's going to do like he's very mischievous some days you know his his humor may be quite dark so let's figure out what's going on and how to kind of and really the sacrifices was kind of a way not just to appease god but to try to get some kind of control on his mood Right? So, so then, we're going to give the best of the best to God to keep him happy. And then we notice that things go wrong for people. We say then, well, it's God's will. Not only that, they must deserve it. They must, they must have done something. Wonder what they did. They must have done something because they're being punished by God. And out of this grew the attitude of not taking care of people who were in trouble for one reason or another. Even people who were born with like deformities, that some kind of punishment from God, some kind of punishment. They did something. They're being punished. Hey, don't interfere. <laughs> Get out of there. Don't. And uh, so then today, even today, when things go wrong, we can have a tendency to say, what did I do to deserve this? What, and, and this is, I mean, it's kind of ingrained in us to be thinking that way. So the sacrifice then is a way to circumvent and kind of atone and look for, you know, well, I'm going to give you this, so please you can forgive the bad things that I've done. And so this idea of sacrificing the best of the best uh, came about and uh, so I'm going to give my best, and that way God's going to continue to bless me. And, uh, you know, so I have more later. So, well, now, in this story of Cain and Abel, Cain sees his sacrifice as not being the best of the best. I mean, I, it doesn't say that he didn't give the best of his what he had, but that he didn't think what he had was good enough. And this is the way of the ego. This is the way of self-centeredness, is that even though in self-centeredness we want it to appear as 